Wake up and lift your head. Luke chapter 21, verse 22 through 28 states, For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This speaks of the huge judgment that will occur at the time of Jesus' return. It says that he will come in a cloud with power and great glory. It also says that it will be dreadful for those who are pregnant and for nursing mothers. However, this is not referring to physically pregnant women and nursing mothers. Rather, it refers to those who are spiritually pregnant, to those who are preaching to many others in a church that is big in the belly with parishioners. Nursing mothers does not refer to physical nursing mothers, but to those who neither know nor speak nor preach God's deep words and of his providence of salvation and instead are comfortable in the notion of, I'll be blessed if I believe in Jesus, or just believe in Jesus. It refers to those who preach the word which is at a very basic level, like for a nursing baby rather than an adult. That is why it says on those days it will be dreadful for those who are pregnant or nursing. Luke chapter 21 verse 24 states, They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Many will die during the time of judgment. Gentiles refer to those who do not believe in God. And it will be a time of war between those who believe in God and those who don't. The words Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled indicates that Christians will be trampled on by non-believers and that they will suffer. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 states, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. The signs will be seen in the sun, moon, and stars. The sun refers to God, the moon refers to Jesus, and the stars refer to prophets. At that time, there will be signs, which does not refer to physical sun, moon, and stars. Instead, it refers to the Christian religious leaders and the signs that can be seen amongst them at the time of judgment. Also, the sea refers to the secular world, and the word refers to the waves of the sea of the world crashing. Thus, this means that the secular world will cause suffering and tumultuous times. Luke chapter 21 verse 26 states, People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The heavenly bodies are the leaders. If we think of not just the leaders of the secular world, but God's leaders becoming a part of the world, our hearts will tremble in terror. Similar words can be seen in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 through 9 states, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to the persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Matthew chapter 24, verse 19 through 20 states, How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. It says that at that time, the Son of Man will return in a cloud and with great glory. But it is not that time of great judgment now. We hope you can comprehend that if there is anyone now who says he is Jesus returned, he is a false prophet. People also think that because it states the Son of Man will return in a cloud, that he will return physically floating on a cloud. Acts chapter 1 verse 9 through 11 states, After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. 
They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. When Jesus ascended, he did not do so physically on a cloud. It says he was hidden from the disciples' sight by a cloud. So, if he will return as he ascended, Jesus will not return on a cloud but be hidden by a cloud. Therefore, the cloud is a written metaphor. Ezekiel chapter 30 verse 3 states, For the day is near, the day of the Lord is near, a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. The day of the Lord's judgment is a day of clouds. Job chapter 38 verse 9 states, When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. If the clouds here referred to physical clouds, it could not be a garment. Then if so, what do clouds in the Bible signify? Proverbs chapter 25 verse 14 states, Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of gifts never given. These clouds signify people, those who lie and boast of gifts that will never be given. The clouds are clouds without rain and like wind without rain. A cloud that cannot send down rain is useless. Like so, it is a metaphor for a liar who boasts of giving a gift without doing so. Jude chapter 1 verse 11 through 12 states, Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted. Twice dead. Cain's way is the way of the murderer. Balaam went a false path for his own glory and profit and the Korah demanded status of priests only to be utterly destroyed. These people are the blemishes at our love feasts, and shepherds who only feed themselves. They are the clouds without rain blown along by the wind. Therefore, we hope all of you here today can comprehend that clouds signify shepherds. Shepherds who only care for their own bodies, and they are false prophets, clouds without rain. This means a true shepherd is a cloud with rain, with water, John chapter 4 verse 14 states, But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Therefore, a cloud with rain is someone who has received the word of Jesus. Then, when Jesus returns on a cloud, what kind of a cloud will he return on? He'll return on a cloud with rain and through a true shepherd. So when it states that Jesus will return, he will do so through a true shepherd. A true shepherd, a cloud with water, will send down rain. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2 states, Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Like these words, a shepherd who has God's words and teaching, who sends down a rain of the word, is a true shepherd. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 26 states, I will make them and the places surrounding my hill a blessing. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. When showers of rain are sent down, they need to be showers of blessing. Which is why when it states that Jesus who sends down these showers of rain will come on clouds, it means he will come through the words of true shepherds. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 22 states, Do any of the worthless idols of the nations bring rain. Do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord, our God. Therefore, our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all this. Today is an era where there is no true word to be found, a time of drought. Churches are unable to send down rain. During the time of Elijah, he prophesied there would be a time of three years of no rain, and there was a drought for three years. And just as Elijah brought down the rain again, a shepherd who can send down God's word and resolve this drought is a true shepherd. Therefore, the statement that Jesus will come on clouds means we need to resolve what these clouds are in order to meet Jesus who returns on the clouds. Luke chapter 21 verse 27 through 28 states, At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, 
Stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. We can see when the Son of Man returns on a cloud, we will not be lifting our heads, but that it happens when we don't. It is when we are not looking up that the Son of Man returns on clouds with great glory and power, and we lift our heads in order to see that. To say "wake up and lift your head" means to not live your life only looking at the ground, at the secular world. And secular concerns of eating, drinking, buying, selling. To live your life looking towards God and for Him. If so, then our time of salvation will be near, is what the Bible stated. We hope all of you here today who understand will not only look at the ground but towards heaven, comprehend God's will, and when the Son of Man returns in a cloud, receive a great blessing of salvation.